Hey everybody, thank you so, so much for tuning in. So for today's video, I have some really fun Dollar Tree DIY Halloween decor. I haven't done a Halloween video on this channel since 2018 when I created that skull candle thing, but I have these brand new videos and I really, really hope that you enjoy them. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because once you hit subscribe, we instantly become best friends. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Hit that notification bell, YouTube may or may not let you know when I post a video, but just in case, follow me on Instagram and let's go ahead and get started. For the first one, I'm using this motion spiral. I found this in the toy section of Dollar Tree. Now I'm just gonna open it up and play around with it a little bit and it naturally has this pumpkin shape. In the floral section, they have floral wire. I would use a thicker gauge than the one that I used, but I'm trying to close this up so that it doesn't move around. I ended up using mini zip ties. They do sell standard large zip ties in the automotive section of Dollar Tree, but I had mini ones from a previous project. Make sure you get this as tight as possible and the standard size would work as well. You can go ahead and spray paint this if you'd like, if you really don't wanna see the wires but I really didn't mind it because I am gonna go ahead and cover this up. Make sure that you clip off the sides. This is what I'm using. These pantyhose are from like Rainbow, but Dollar Tree has a ton of pantyhose. They have little trouser options. This was kind of a challenge getting it in, but once you get it in, it is like magic. So I am gonna create a knot up top, and this is gonna be a little bulky, but we are gonna cut this down. Cut this down as much as you can without disturbing the knot. You can decide later on what is the top or the bottom of the pumpkin. You can stop right here and tie this up and call it a day. However, I decided to add twinkle lights on the inside. By the way, if you want to spray paint those wires, do so. Totally up to you. I figured that at night when you have the twinkle lights on, you would see them. But if you want to be a little less lazy, go ahead and spray paint. So I'm cutting one of the legs on the pantyhose. If you're using trousers, you're not gonna need to do this because it's gonna be open on one end. And I am fishing the wire through the bottom. I've decided that that's gonna be my top and that's how I'm going to distribute everything. Take your time with this if you're using fishnets because you don't want to rip this. You can glue your twinkle lights to the bottom. These twinkle lights are from Dollar Tree. Other places do sell twinkle lights with a lot more lights, so it's up to you what you want to use. Just take your time so all of this hard work doesn't get ruined with a snag. Now you can tie the rest of the pantyhose up Again, if you are using trousers like the ones from Dollar Tree, you won't need to do this. Or if you happen to find pantyhose, which are just socks type things, this is a stem that I'm gonna be using. I use this footage frequently on my channel. These are clay pumpkins that I created. For the stem, I used air dry modeling clay. Dollar Tree also has air dry modeling clay, but I always mention that I am not a fan. Make sure that you roll it out into a ball and then roll it out into a cone shape and for the bottom, shape it onto the pumpkin and create the stem however you want. Before you paint it, make sure that it is completely dry and now you have custom stems. I did model this on a Dollar Tree foam pumpkin. These are just stems that I reused and I would recommend doing so because modeling it on top of fishnets would be a nightmare the rest of the pantyhose down if you have any parts that are exposed and now you have this beautiful pumpkin. I found the cutest bags at Dollar Tree. They have different kinds. This one's a cat. They have a little ghost. They even have a pumpkin. The bottom is rounded out so it is a little tricky to cut down. Just make sure that you remove the cardboard. I was trying to find a way to cut this down to where the cat face wouldn't be cut off. The best way I found was pushing the fabric all the way out. 
I'm going to use this rotary cutter from Dollar Tree. You can find it at the crafter square section and I'm just using this level which is also in the automotive section of Dollar Tree. If you have your own stuff then definitely use that. I just wanted to show that you can definitely use Dollar Tree materials to complete this. So I'm going to try and get this as straight as possible which I'm not going to lie was really really hard and I'm going to flip it inside out to glue the bottom. You can sew it if you want. You can use whatever you like. I don't recommend heat and bond for this, but hot glue, sewing, and the brush on fabric fuse would work beautifully. I tried to get the hot glue as straight as possible because you're going to be able to see the fold when you flip this back over. So whatever you're using, make sure that you're doing this as straight as possible. I'm flipping this back over and I'm making sure that I'm pushing those corners out. If I don't do this now, then when I stuff it, it's going to be impossible and it's going to look rounded out. So I'm pushing. You can use a pencil for this. For the rest of the bag, you're going to want to remove the drawstring and remove the handles. The drawstring you can remove using regular scissors. However, the handle, you want to use something like a seam ripper. This is going to allow you to rip where the handles were sewn on without actually ripping the fabric. This is what it looks like. I could not find it at all when I was filming this. So I just used the rotary, rotary cutters. I don't recommend. If you could find a seam ripper, definitely use that. Now I'm going to stuff this. You can use old clothes. You can use an old pillow. You can use whatever you want. I have an old pillow that I keep around for projects like this. And I'm trying to get this as full as possible and then I am going to shut this. So I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure this material is waterproof or at least water resistant. So if you really wanted to, you can actually put this outside. Haven't tested it, don't quote me on that, but the material does feel like it can handle being outside. I tried to seal this as straight as possible, but I gotta be honest with you, since all of the stuffing was pushing back, that was really hard. This is what it looks like, and here is the little ghoul, and look how cute this is. Every year, Dollar Tree impresses me with the stuff that they have. This was in the candle section. I got this last year, but I saw it this year as well. In the candle section, they also had these emergency candles. I grabbed these because they were shorter. They also have long stem ones. I think this goes without saying, but please do not play with fire. I have this on some wax paper so that if anything drips down, it's not a problem. My audience is grown, but just in case this happens to reach anybody under 18 or anybody who should not be using fire, please just skip this tutorial. I'm grabbing another candle and I'm dripping down. I want this to look like an old candle that's just been burning or at least an old candle holder. So I'm doing this to both of them and the longer you let this burn on its own, the cooler it looks. Okay, the wood selection at Dollar Tree this year has been phenomenal. I really love this cutout of a coffin and I bought two because I wanted to make a coffin, casket, whatever you call it, that opens and shuts. So for this, I'm using jumbo popsicle sticks and I am tracing out all of the angles of this coffin and cutting them down with regular scissors. If you wanted to use the 97 cent paint sticks, you are gonna have to cut this down with a saw so I went with this because it's nice and simple. And if it doesn't look perfect, totally fine. This is supposed to be weathered and worn. This project looks like it could be a little intimidating, but I promise you it's not. When all of my sides are cut, I'm going to put this in place. You can use Gorilla Wood Glue, but I want an instant hold. And if you notice, I took the casket and I flipped it to where the side with the popsicle sticks going across is facing down. The only reason I did this is so that when I add the popsicle sticks that I cut down, it's a little bit easier because the casket is a little bit elevated. You'll see, it just made it a little easier.
that it is a little sturdier, I'm adding hot glue to the corners where all of these popsicle sticks meet. You can skip this step if you're not adding a lid so that hot glue is not visible, but because I am adding the top of the coffin on top, I wanna make sure that doesn't fall over. So here it is put together. It looks adorable and this is what I mean by the popsicle sticks going on the bottom to give it a little height. To add the top of the coffin, I'm using these little hinges. I don't know how much they cost now. They used to be 97 cents at Walmart. They're probably like $1.20 because prices have gone up, but I don't think they're past that. Pay attention to how you add your hinges. I wanna make sure that it stops right where the coffin closes. So it opens all the way, but it stops right where it closes. You can add one of the Dollar Tree skeletons. I'm adding this Dollar Tree hand candle holder. I know it's a little big, but it still looks really good. And then I'm adding some LED lights. This looks so cool. In the craft section of Dollar Tree, they have these 11 by 14 canvases. If you want something smaller, the 8x10 do have the wood border. This one is flat. I'm giving it a coat of black chalk paint. Dollar Tree also carries chalk paint, but you can just do whatever color you like, a regular black, totally up to you. Now I'm using an SVG for this. I will link this one in the description, but if you don't wanna use a Cricut or any cutting machine, you can just print this out. I did this on stencil vinyl. You can also just use regular vinyl, but I thought that the lines on the side would be a little hard to transfer, so I made this into a stencil. And I'm using the little round Dollar Tree brushes as well as just regular paint and pouncing up and down. Make sure that you are going in an up and down motion and not side to side so that it doesn't bleed. This part is completely optional. If you are using the 8x10 canvas, it already has a wood border. I'm creating one using these dowels and that little mini saw will be listed in my description. This is pretty easy to do and I just put it together using regular wood glue and then adding some weight to the side and letting it dry completely. You're gonna be able to pop the picture in and out. So if you wanna switch this out next season, you totally can. Another super impressive wood cutout from Dollar Tree is this spooky witch mixing up a potion. I'm going to use some lime green paint just to outline the face and the potion. You can add features if you want, but I thought that just the outline would look really cool. I kind of regret not having the potion drip down the sides and a little bit onto the actual ladle or spoon, whatever it is she's holding. Now I'm taking some black. I am using a brush that makes it really uncomfortable, but my daughter was messing around with all my brushes, so I, this is the only one I found. I'm covering the entire thing and it already looks super cool. By the way, I did the lime green first because obviously painting over black would mean that you would have a lot of black peeking through. I'm using this antique wax thing that I found at Walmart and these Dollar Tree rulers. Yes, that is an unfinished project on the back that isn't part of this video, but I am painting that on both sides. You'll see later on, this is an optional step, but I really, really like it. Dollar Tree did not have any green LED lights, which these are the same lights that I used for the little casket. I'm removing these skeleton things, and then I am going to take some permanent marker, make sure that it's permanent, and I'm gonna start painting the little bulbs. I got this idea from all of my mom's old school Christmas lights. I remember when we would put them away, a lot of the colors would peel off. So I had a feeling that if I painted this, that it would have a beautiful neon effect. And I 
was right. I'm gonna hot glue my beautiful witch on to that ruler. I'm really glad that that ruler has that little circle thing. To keep her upright, I'm just using these little wood things. You can use Jenga pieces, whatever you have. And I'm only putting it on her silhouette, not on the cauldron because I don't want it to show through. So now it's time for the star of the show and what makes this craft really pop, which is the neon green LED lights. I'm feeding them through the hole that is in the ruler and this is going to help big time when it comes to keeping this as compact as possible. Make sure that you're really careful. You don't want to mess this up. So fold it in and just keep a nice amount so that you can hot glue the actual battery pack. Hot glue it wherever you want. I kept it at the bottom so it doesn't move over. And then I am adding my lights all around. You can just keep them at the cauldron. You can bunch them up at the bottom if you don't wanna do this. You don't even have to add the lights, but I think that this makes all the difference and makes it look so cool, especially at night. <laughs> I love it. This beautiful sign is available every Halloween. And if you notice, I have no nails on in this, the beginning of this clip because I actually started these in 2019 when I was doing my Playhouse video and I just waited a little too long and I didn't post those Halloween DIYs. Everybody had moved on to Christmas. So I am spray painting it with some white spray paint and now I'm going to make it look a little aged by adding a little tiny bit of black paint and then brushing that on, making sure that I get all of those cool details. Depending on how dramatic you want this to look, make sure that you use a paper towel or your fingers just to dab some on or remove some I wanted this to be subtle, however, it would look really cool keeping it as is with the darker black. Okay, now we're back to 2020 me and I'm finishing this craft. I took one of these little letter boards from Dollar Tree. They are very, very soft foam. So cutting this down is not hard at all. Just make sure you have really, really good scissors. I'm removing the frame and then I'm gonna outline. Since this is really soft foam, even a regular pencil will make the indentation. I'm just using whatever I found and going around. Full disclosure, I cut this down all wonky, but it still worked. Even though the foam is really, really soft, it still is thick, so get yourself some really good scissors. These scissors have lived a very long life and it's time for them to go. So I think this is the last project that I'm using them in and then I'm retiring them. R.I.P. to my faithful scissors. Moment of silence. When hot gluing it down, I want to be really careful because I don't want any of the hot glue to seep to the front because you will be able to see it. So on those little tabs where the skeleton frame thing was attached to, that's where I'm adding my hot glue. Now I am just writing out boo because that's really the only option that I have. It didn't really bring that many letters. I found these little ghost cutouts from Dollar Tree and I'm using Dollar Tree spackle. You can find this in the automotive section and I'm covering up that little hole because it will look kind of like it's not supposed to be there if you keep the hole. Look how perfect this looks. And now I'm going to paint it white, paint it however you want. You want to tie dye it, do that. You want to put some leopard spots on it, do that. <laughs> but I'm just going with a classic white.
The little hole is still showing. I really could have used another layer of spackle, but that's totally fine. I'm hot gluing it to my sign, and it is so simple, but so cute. There's another craft that I started in 2019, but of course everyone had moved on to Christmas, so <laughs> here I am finishing it for you guys today. I use these chess pieces, which are no longer available at Dollar Tree. They're super hard to find, so I would recommend those little wooden stubby dowel things from Walmart or just getting a chess set from the thrift store or another dollar store. This is what they look like from Dollar Tree, but I haven't found them in a long time. I'm adding them by using E6000 and glue. The glue is for instant holds, but also to flood the inside because it's hollow. And I'm creating a little pattern with three so that it looks like a realistic cauldron. Before I set it to dry, I wanna make sure that it's standing straight and it is, and now I can just have it chill out. If you want a handle on this, you can use this little lantern from Dollar Tree and take its handle. I'm okay with it not having a handle, so I skipped this, but up to you. I am giving it a coat of this hammered spray paint, and if you watch my Playhouse video, I think you get to see it. Nope, just kidding. No, you don't. This is what it looks like, and this is present day me in 2020. Now, for this, I am going to put a green candle on the inside. This is from Dollar Tree. You can remove the wick at the bottom, melt it down and add it in so you can add more than one, or you can just put it in there regularly as decor if you're never gonna light this, which is probably what I'm gonna do. It fits beautifully, but because it has those open sides, you might wanna melt it down and put another candle in. I have these little tags from Target from that year, and I'm gonna hot glue it just to the sides, not to the front, just in case I change my mind. You can keep this plain, just black, but I really liked adding this. Target always has these little thingies or something close. Look at this beauty. So this is another one of my favorites. This candle holder is so beautiful from Dollar Tree. It does have an open bottom and open where the eyes are. So I really wanted to create a hole up top. Now, I am just showing you, do not do this. This, not only is it not gonna create the hole, but it might crack it. What you're gonna wanna do is add water, just like you would tile. Do this very, very slow. And I'm starting with a small hole, and you're gonna see how it, the water gets murky, and then the hole creates, woo! And then I'm going in with a bigger drill bit. The bigger drill bit was a bit of an issue because obviously there's a hole there so the water won't stay. So what I had to do was basically hold the water bottle with one hand and just keep dripping the water. Once I had the drill bit in, the water kind of stayed, but as the hole was getting bigger, the water would drip and I would have to keep going. We did it, y'all. We created a successful hole on a Dollar Tree candle holder. Now for the top, I also found this in the candle holder section of Dollar Tree where the candles are, duh. And I'm gonna take some permanent markers, the same permanent markers that I used for the lime green lights. I am gonna start to just make blotches all over this. If it had that crackle effect all over, I would probably skip this step, but since it doesn't, I want to create a murkier look. This is sort of like alcohol ink or what you would do, you know, on your nails where you do Sharpie and then you spray it with alcohol. This is alcohol. I went a little too heavy handed with the alcohol. The less that you add, the more the blotches are apparent. Let it drip down. The benefit of using this is that it dries pretty quickly. I liked that it dripped in the front of this and I actually went ahead and took a little makeup sponge and blotted some on the outside. I found these purple lights at Dollar Tree and they are gorgeous. You can use whatever color you want or you can just use one of the flat little LED 
lights, but I like that this was purple so that it looks really cool on the inside. What I love about this is that since the eyes are open, they glow as well. I'm gonna put this all into my little candle holder thing, and then I'm gonna hot glue it and E6000 it, or super glue it. The rose does make it tilt a bit, so you are gonna have to play around with the placement. These candle holders are also from Dollar Tree. They're the same ones that I used for the coffin. And I am playing around with the placement of how I want this. You can keep it plain. You don't have to use these, but I thought it would be a nice twist. Obviously this is gonna feel a little funky because it's not made for this. I put one up top as well, but it looks so top heavy that even having one at the top and at the bottom just looked a little funky. This is what it looks like with one at the top. This is what it looks like with both of them, and this is what I went with. So that is it, y'all. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button if you enjoy it. Share it with a friend that loves Halloween. And if you recreate these, tag me on Instagram. I would love to see them. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.